Hello, my friends, my fellow nurses. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews, and I am doing a reaction video today. I had been looking for a video that I wanted to, to react to that was titled, How I Passed in 75 Questions. And I've seen a lot of those out, and some of them are very highly viewed, like hundreds of thousands of views. And so I thought, well, I'll, I'll react to one of those since I'm sort of opposed to having the attitude of I need to pass in 75. So I watched several of them and there just wasn't really anything I could contribute to it that would make it in any way interesting to have me watch it or react to it. So I decided against doing that kind of video and then there's nothing wrong with the videos. There just wasn't anything for me to add to it. So I found this other one, um, a young man named uh, Shedman Soltez. And he recently took NCLEX. He actually failed in 75 and then he passed in 75. And he's talking about his experience. And this is a young man who was highly successful in college. He has his YouTube channel. I encourage you to go over there and show him some love. Maybe subscribe to his channel. Uh, he considers himself, I think, more of a lifestyle vlogger. But one, at least one of the videos he has there talks about how to get a 4.0 in college. So I think this is a guy that was highly successful uh, in college. And I think he studied very hard for the NCLEX and he still failed in 75, which if you fail in 75, you really failed like kind of miserably. So um, I think it was just devastating to him that he did that. Of course it is. Just like any of you who failed, um, it's absolutely devastating. So let's go ahead and watch this. I think he's got a story that's pretty interesting to tell. So I just got to get him up here and get it started. Story of how I went from failing the NCLEX in 75 questions to passing the NCLEX in 75 questions. Hello everyone, my name is Shedman Soltez. I make lifestyle vlogs just like this one. So if you guys like my videos, feel free to subscribe down below. For a while, I really wasn't sure if I was gonna make this type of video, but I figured that I could make this a learning opportunity, not only for myself, but also for everybody out there that's on their NCLEX journey. And hopefully you guys can watch this video, learn from what went well with my journey and what didn't go as well. Before I get into the details, here's a little context. I graduated in May and by then I'd already done the whole job search thing. I had a job lined up and my NCLEX date was in late July because my start date for my work was early August. So in general, I had about two months to prepare. On my first attempt, everything that I used was Hearst Review because that was mandatory for the nursing school that I was attending. On top of that, I also bought a subscription to UWorld. I think it was the 60 day trial with the one practice exam. And on top of that, I also reviewed the Mark Klimek prioritization and delegation lecture online. So for those of you who may be watching this video a year or so from now, there was a time when the Clinic Review, Mark Clinic's um, Clinic Review audios had been uh, recorded surreptitiously by those who attended his reviews and um, they would upload those audios uh, to YouTube. And so that's what he's talking about listening to there. He did not go to a Clinic Review. He just listened to one of the lectures online and um, depending on, they're not on anymore. We've gotten most of them taken off because we just want to be in control of the message that clinic review is putting out. Um, and anyway, I'm not going to get all into that, but anyway, you can't really find them much online anymore, but depending on when you're listening to this or watching this, uh, we may be selling them uh, through clinic review. So you can always visit our website, clinicreviews.com to see, but we won't start that till at least 2023. So if it's not 2023, we're not selling them yet. So um, anyway, let's get back to it. That's, but he only listened to one lecture and it's a the total clinic review is a three day, 21 hour um, review with notes and books and all kinds of stuff. And so he basically listened to an hour of that online. So after the Hearst live review, I reviewed one content topic, 
per day. I use the Hearst booklet as well as the online lectures on YouTube and on the Hearst website. I also did 75 questions on UWorld, all random topics using timed mode, not tutor mode. And I reviewed every single question regardless of whether it was right or wrong and took paper notes. Like I physically wrote down notes. It was, it was a lot of paper. Everything so this is, in my opinion, a mistake that a lot of people make, and that is um, they try to learn the rationale for all the questions. And this is particularly something they do in UWorld because UWorld has such long, lengthy, in-depth rationale. And we strongly recommend against doing that. Um, we don't have a problem if you look to see which questions you got wrong. And you can even look to see why you got it wrong. And you can maybe take, if you have to write something down, you can take a, a sentence. You can write one sentence down. This is our recommendation. And the sentence should be really the concept that you missed. So was it infection control? Was it PPE? Was it acid-base balance? Was it um, alcoholism or maybe some other substance use? Or maybe it was psych drugs or maybe it was... Uh, cardiac drugs, whatever it was, like write the concept down and then start to look and see if you're finding a pattern for the types of questions that you're missing. Now, if you're missing all types, um, then you probably need to go to some kind of NCLEX review to help you. If you find you're missing just like one type of question, then you may be able to find that type of question on our channel and do some review related to those types of questions. So, um, we just don't really recommend just trying to memorize rationale from your whatever Q bank you're using. That's that's not a good use of your Q banks. I think it would take me about three to five hours every single day, and it was pretty consistent during the weekdays with the weekends as my break days. This pretty much continued for the entirety of the two months, except for about three weeks prior to my NCLEX date, we had a family vacation, so I took a week off. And then the week prior to my exam, I took the UWorld practice exam, as well as one of the four Hearst Review practice exams to just check my knowledge and my understanding of everything. My test day was in the afternoon so I also did some minor notes reviews before I left for my exam. I know that they tell you not to do anything the day prior, the night prior, but I'm really not the type of student to do that. So we do recommend that you take the day off before you're in CLEX, but he is the personality type of a lot of nursing students, and that is kind of a type A, I want to do really well on everything kind of a personality type. So if you find taking the day off before you're in CLEX, anxiety provoking or incredibly stressful, then go ahead and study the day before. So you don't want to do anything the day before that's going to cause you more stress. However, if you can manage to take the day off, that would be great because what happens is you can process your brain. And I don't know how it works. If somebody out there can tell me, that'd be great. Um, the brain is able to process information even when we're not thinking about it or even studying it. And and I've, I've just found this not only to be true for myself, but to be true for other people, that a, giving yourself a 24-hour window of not studying allows your brain to process that information that you've been working on. It kind of, it's almost like it chews on it and digests it and somehow puts it into a form in your head that's easier for you to then take and use. So we do recommend taking the day off before if you can do that. So come test day, I left maybe an hour, 45 minutes early. I went inside, took the exam, and I felt pretty okay. Not great, but not terrible either. When I went back to my vehicle, I did the whole Pearson view trick. I'm not going to go into the details about how to do it. It's everywhere online. It's essentially a way to check if you passed or failed in advance before you get your unofficial test results. And it does it is work. It's not 100% accurate, but it has a pretty, pretty good track record. I went and did that and I got the bad pop up. Like I said, at this point, it's not official, but because it's for the most part pretty accurate, I was very bummed out for mm -hmm. the next two days while I was waiting for my unofficial test results. And that's way all of you feel if you if you failed the NCLEX and uh, I want you to know that that's the way you feel like you don't have to don't don't pile guilt on top of that you're going to feel terrible and then don't feel guilty for feeling terrible that whenever you work hard for something and no matter how much you studied you worked hard for it I mean you went to school and you did a lot of lot of hard work to get to the point you're at so whenever your effort does not achieve the outcome you are expecting it's very, very discouraging. And, you know, NCLEX is a 
this thing that is just, man, it's hard to explain. It's hard to understand. It's so frustrating. And, you know, think about this guy. He put in, um, he put in so much time and effort and he was an excellent student, probably did wonderful in school and he still didn't pass in 75. Like that's just so frustrating and perplexing. And if you feel frustrated and perplexed, you're not alone. This is what NCLEX legitimately does to people. It's, it's very, it, it's very challenging. And obviously after the two days, got my results and I said that I failed. I was devastated yep. as someone who did pretty well in nursing school. Yep. It was very demoralizing knowing you had failed while you were seeing all your peers pass the very first time. Thankfully, I had peers and family that supported me through the transition and I got through it. <laughs> the worst part was really having to call up uh, my job and be like, hey, I failed. Um, what do we do now? Yeah. But thankfully, they were like, we can just move your start date later in October and you just let us know when you pass. So during my first attempt, what went well was that I created a schedule and I stuck to it. Every day I was studying material, I was reviewing material, and then I would do the 75 question practice exam on New World and then... I agree. That's a good thing to do. I think having a structured schedule and intentional time where you study is a good thing. Some of you out there have um, small children that are very distracting and you're like, yeah, it's really tough to find a schedule. I basically grab the time when I can. I understand that. Um, so what we're saying is if you can um, get two hours a day where you can go to the library or do something, get away from all the distractions from the Amazon delivery truck and all that kind of stuff, your dog's barking. And uh, if you can, it doesn't have to be five hours a day. He did a lot of studying. Um, it doesn't have to be that much time, but um, it is better to get away and have some kind of structured schedule if you can. Review what I got wrong, what I got correct. Consistency and discipline are key when you guys are studying for the NCLEX. I was also using different resources, but not to the point that it was overwhelming and there was conflicting information mm -hmm. everywhere. What didn't... I agree. I think people overuse uh, resources. You really should pick one NCLEX kind of review strategy, like uh, if you can use Kaplan, Hearst, um, ATI, Clinic Reviews, whatever you use. Now, obviously, we recommend Clinic Reviews, um, but you choose one. So let's say you choose Clinic Reviews. We recommend you stick with Clinic Reviews and choose a QBank, and those are your two resources. That's what we recommend. Because if you start having too much, it becomes overwhelming and you don't know where to go. And you do find conflicting data sometimes between resources. Um, the thing about clinic reviews that people get a little nervous about is we don't have our books aren't as thick, right? Our books are like. Our books are this thick, right? So um, they get nervous about that. But we prepare you for the NCLEX with what you absolutely need to know so that you're not overwhelmed with information. Anyway, I won't, I won't belabor that point. It didn't work, I think, was the fact that I had a vacation like three weeks prior to my start date. I feel like it definitely stopped the momentum or definitely held it back a little bit. I think that when you guys are planning your studying month, try to have it as uninterrupted as you can. Try to leave your vacations before the study period or maybe after you take the exam because it's best to, like I said, build that momentum so that you are at your peak by the time that you guys take your exam. So I doubt that had much impact on it. He he feels like it did. And if he felt like it did, then it probably did. But um, that probably had more to do with his belief that it affected him than anything else. Um, either that or in hindsight, he's looking back and saying, yeah, he wasn't quite as committed after the vacation or something like that in his head. So um, I don't think it matters if you take a week off um, before, as long as you can get back into it when you come back. But I do understand what he's saying about kind of keeping in that momentum, heading towards the goal and not taking your eyes off the prize, so to speak. Some other things that didn't go as well was I only took one fourth of the Hearst reviews just because I personally felt that UWorld was better with the practice exams. But I don't know, maybe taking all four at that time would have helped me with understanding more of the content material. Now, what he's talked about so far, I think um, probably had some effect on him. Uh, there is a, a problem where people like they'll pay all this money for a review and then they kind of maybe only use half the resources like that's that's probably not the best idea. So people may take 
uh, a clinic review and they come to the class and they we fill in all the blanks and they, oh, I got to know the yellow book. Well, we have a blue book as well. And you cannot forget the blue book. You have to know them both. So, you know, he didn't use all of his resources, which probably did have some kind of effect. But I'll tell you what, what he's going to talk about right now, I think had more effect than anything else. So let's hear what he has to say. So obviously this is a very stressful, anxiety inducing time. After I essentially went through the grieving process, I just had to keep going. I was reading a book at this time called Ego is the Enemy. This is not sponsored or anything, but it definitely helped me transition my mindset. It helped me realize that I was only really feeling hurt because I had attached my ego and my pride to passing the first time. With that being said, my mindset going to the second time was that I did not know anything. I was a blank slate and my job or goal was not to just pass, but it was to work as hard as I can to know and understand everything I could medically and nursing knowledge wise. So I think his mindset was that the mindset change was phenomenal. Now he's going to talk about how much he studied, which I think is more than what he probably needed to do. I'll talk about why I think he did that later when he describes it. But what he did, his mindset that changed went from, I think he didn't say this, but this is my interpretation of what he said. So Shedman, if you're watching and you want to email me and say, you are wrong, you are totally wrong. Okay, that's fine. But I think what happened was he went from being someone who's thought, oh yeah, I know the answer to that. I know it. To, okay, I don't really know the answer, but I can figure it out. And that's exactly the mindset you have to have. He expected the first time he took it, he thought, oh, I got to know the right answer. And he said, that's the right answer. I'm going to pick it. And he would move on. Whereas the second time he said, all right, I've got to think through this. This isn't about having memorized all the right answers. It's about critically thinking. And he did have to kind of let his ego go for that one because it sounds to me like he was pretty certain that he always knew what the right answer was. And it turned out he was wrong. And so he had to learn how to think through the process. And that's exactly what, what you need to do. You need to get over this idea that you have to know everything and realize this is a, about clinical reasoning and critical thinking. It's about understanding basic nursing practice, the fundamentals of nursing, what are the safest things we can do? And then taking those fundamentals and applying them across specialties, not specialist knowledge, fundamentals applied across specialties. We'll keep going. I still used Hearst. I still used UWorld. I renewed my membership and Mark Klimek. But this time I took all of the Hearst practice tests and I reviewed every single Mark Klimek lecture. On top of that... So what he's saying is that instead of just watching one of the, or listening to one of the audios, he listened to all of them, which I think was around 12 or what, what usually was posted that I found was around 12 or 13 hours worth, which still was not the entire clinic review content. The clinic review content is 21 hours of content. And I, what was online was not that much. So, but nevertheless, he still said, I'm going to listen to all the clinic. I'm going to do the entire clinic review that I have access to and implement that. And I'm pretty sure he took notes on that as well, which is, which is a good thing. Whatever, if, if you are listening to an audio resource, whether it's a blog or a podcast or YouTube channel, whatever it is, if you're listening to something, you need to take notes because just listening is not enough. You need to take notes so that you can take what you're learning and apply it. That I also added the NCLEX High Yield podcast, as well as these review packets that my parents actually used when they were studying for the NCLEX. So really funny, actually. It was honestly very similar because I also had about two months until my new exam date in September. For this section, I'm going to divide the study into the first month and the second month because my method sort of changed on the second month for reasons that I'll explain in the what went well section. So pretty much every day I would again review a single topic using my Hearst review book. But this time my 75 view world practice questions wouldn't be all random. Instead, I would gear the questions towards the topic that I was learning. I think this helped a lot, but also change. I agree. I think that's good. And, and if you happen to choose clinic reviews as your NCLEX uh, 
kind of tutorial that you end up using. What I always recommend to people is find all the, in, in the blue and the yellow book, find all the endocrine stuff, study all the endocrine stuff, and then take an endocrine test using your QBank. Uh, find all the maternity stuff and then find all the maternity stuff in your Q bank and study it and apply it. And what you do is you study the material, the facts and the strategies you have to have, and then you apply it using that content. Now, at some point, you're going to take the, the big test, right? Like the, the random from any topic test. But in studying it, I definitely agree that studying it by topic is a very good way to go. Change was because I had this mindset of I didn't know anything, even though I, I did. I spent a lot more time reviewing and taking notes. What was three to five hours of studying became like five to six hours consistently the first month. And I would. So I don't think you need to do that much studying. He is a, a personality type that I think when he goes all in, he goes all in. And that's just, that's just who he is. He just goes all in. I think he was embarrassed that he failed. It sounds like he comes from a high performing family whose parents are both nurses, probably advanced practice nursing would be my guess. Um, and he just was like, I'm not going to fail again. I can't fail again. So he went all in, but I don't think you need to study eight hours a day for two months to pass NCLEX. That's not, that's not what I think. However, He'll talk about it in a little while, but studying this much and doing it the way he did it increased his confidence significantly. So what I want to say to you is that whatever it is you're doing, make sure it's increasing your confidence and not decreasing it. You need to increase your confidence. If your confidence is being killed by whatever you're doing, stop doing it. Okay. Confidence is key still take breaks on weekends instead of paper notes i made a google drive folder and had documents for different areas of knowledge i was learning and it was just like pages and pages of notes for each document so i don't think that's necessary what um what we offer is a blue book a blue book is the basic content of factual information that you need so we don't think it's necessary for you to go through and make pages and pages of notes he was basically putting together his own blue book which is which is great it worked for him but you really don't need to do that if you work with us. I would listen to the NCLEX High Yield podcast whenever I could. It was literally like I'd be jogging in the morning. I'd be eating breakfast. I would be driving on long car rides and I would be listening to the podcast instead of, you know, listening to music. So I checked out the podcast and it, it's uh, I think it's about 22 hours or maybe 25 hours. Uh, I can't tell who the person is that put it together. He does have a YouTube channel. He's a nurse. He calls himself Dr. Something. I don't remember what his name is. Um, it seems to be totally legitimate. Um, I wouldn't say that his style is one that resonates, resonates with me particularly, but if it resonates with you, go for it and do it. But you don't want that to be the only thing you do um, because just listening is not enough. You really need to have a focused, uh, fact-based something that you're studying. And, and he made up his own. He, he typed it up and made spreadsheets, right? Because he studied eight hours a day. We have the blue book and the yellow book, which is strategy. So just just if you're going to do the, the high, N, NCLEX High Yield podcast, which I have no problem with you doing at all, um, just make sure that you're learning it and using it and not just listening to it. This kept going until the second month when I had reviewed all the content material. And at this point, my goal was now to build exam stamina. So I went ahead and finished the other three Hearst practice exams, reviewed them all. And after I would also do a total of 160 UWorld questions and review every single question before the second month of studying. I don't recommend reviewing every question. I only recommend reviewing the questions you missed. And again, just to see what the concepts were that you missed. That's just my recommendation. I ended up doubling the amount of hours to about eight to 12 hours of studying every day just because I was deeply reviewing every single question after I much. took my practice exams. I still had my weekends off, but on Saturdays, I would also review my online notes or I listened to a Mark Klimek lecture and took notes. And at night... So he took notes, which is good when he took when he listened to the lectures. Again, if this is 2023 or beyond and you're listening to this, we probably have the audios available for you. If you don't have, if, if 
you're listening to this in 2022 and the audios are not available, just know that if you come to a clinic review, they're $3.95. I realize not everybody can afford that. But if you come to a review either online or in person, you can refresh with us at $25 for as many times as you want to, which means you can come again and again and again and again um, at very minimal cost and you can refresh online. And that is similar to listening to them over and over again. So um, anyway, that's just an option. During like the final few weeks, whenever I felt willing, I would do the practice questions from my parents' review book. And I think that definitely helped a lot because there were also some testing strategies on there that helped me during game day, if you will. So the day before, I just relaxed, did some minor notes, reviews, just like the first time. I drove to the testing location because it was different. And I'm so glad I did because when I pulled up, the only road that was leading to the testing location was gone. Like the GPS told me to turn right. There was no right. So I drove around for like an extra 20 minutes trying to find where the new road was. Just like the biggest tip is like either get there so early that you're not stressed or, you know, do a test run of drive. Absolutely. I strongly recommend um, if you have any testing anxiety at all that you go uh, to the test site the day before or whenever, sometime before. I've heard a lot of horror stories from people telling me they went to the wrong place and so forth. So um, I, I recommend going there ahead of time. Driving to the location maybe the day prior. During test day, I actually felt a lot more ease at this time other than, you know, just the typical nerves. I was also mentally preparing myself to stay for the entire 145 questions. Exactly right. You need to be prepared for 145 so that if it gets to, you know, 76, 106, uh, 126, your stomach isn't dropping into, you know, the floor thinking, oh, I failed, I failed. You got to be ready for 145. I was just focused on making sure that I read every question carefully, mm -hmm. read every choice carefully, mm -hmm. thought critically, and then answered See? before moving on. See, when he, I hit question his attitude towards taking questions was completely different the second time. Thinking critically, reading the question carefully, reading the answer carefully, thinking critically, not expecting to just know the answer right off the bat, but actually thinking through the question and his confidence was very high because of all the studying he'd done. 41, I ended up taking a break. That's how I've been practicing after. Take breaks. I strongly recommend it. Question 75, it shut off and my heart sank. <laughs> Let me tell you, it was not a good look knowing that I failed in 75 questions. The computer shut off at question 76. Uh oh. So I walked out not knowing what to think. This time I didn't bother doing the Pearson view trick because I was so proud of how hard I worked. Mm -hmm. I just relaxed for two days. Mm -hmm. So after two days, I got a notification that said your unofficial test results are ready. So before I did that, I was like, oh my gosh, let me look on my state nursing board's website and see if my license is up. Looked it up and nothing. There was nothing there. And so I was just <laughs> preparing myself to Man. see the bad four letter word, yep. looked, opened my eyes, and then I saw the good four letter <laughs> word pass. That's Again, awesome. I had a schedule and I stuck to it for sure. I also tried different resources mm -hmm. and made sure I understood everything. There was not a point where I was like, oh yeah, I I'm, I'm pretty sure I know that. I reviewed so much information that I could sometimes feel my head throbbing <laughs> at the end of the day. I also found <laughs> some test taking strategies that worked for me and mm -hmm. I stuck with it during mm -hmm. the exam, mm -hmm. especially when... See, he found test taking strategies that worked for him. So he did a lot of self-evaluation. He studied so... He studied so much um, that he actually pro and probably evaluated the questions so much that he started seeing his own patterns and starting to see what he was doing wrong and what he was doing right. Now, you can certainly do that, but that's that's what we offer in clinic reviews is we offer the patterns that we've seen that help you get questions right. And we have the database of information of facts that you need to know uh, to pass. Whenever I feel like I didn't understand the information as well for the question. And also just the fact that I really worked on building my exam stamina. Mm -hmm. I think that definitely helped. Mm -hmm. I actually learned the 160 question U World practice from uh, NCLEX High Yield podcast. And that's actually why the second month change was so drastic in terms of the number of study hours I was doing. Um, the last thing that went well was knowing how you're doing in terms of 
your topic understanding because I actually had to reschedule my exam twice. Mm. I, I felt like I was ready to take it, but something in the back of my mind was like, okay, like just take take a few more days mm -hmm. to do some more review and just be as confident as you can. When I, I have people say to me, um, should I reschedule? Should I reschedule? And I say, well, how are you feeling? Well, I feel like I should reschedule. Well, then reschedule. If you feel like you should reschedule, if you feel like you're not quite ready, reschedule. Uh, I have people say to me, well, I, I just want to take it and see how I do. I'll just take it and see how I do. The, if you take it just to see how you do, you are vastly underestimating how devastated you're going to be if you don't pass it. Because people who do that think, oh, it won't matter if I don't pass. It always matters if you don't pass. Always. Even if you were thinking it's just a, man, eh, we'll just see how I do. It always matters if you don't pass. So don't take NCLEX just to see how you do. Take it when you're ready. You need to be confident. He was so clearly so much more confident the second time. And that's where we want you at Clinic Reviews. We want you to be at the height of your confidence when you go in to take it. Whenever you take it. And so by the time I actually took it, I was just, I knew I was ready. Mm -hmm. It seemed like that worked. So don't let anybody dictate when you're going to take your exam. You know when you're ready and nobody can tell you when you're ready. Mm -hmm. I think this time there weren't many things that didn't go well, but if I had to choose what I would have changed, it'd probably be not to push myself so hard because my study hours were so long at times. I'm not sure if it was as efficient as it could be because the hours were so long, but I mean, who really knows? It ended up working out at the end. And it increased his confidence. So again, I'm not saying you don't, I don't think you need to study that long, but if it increases your confidence to do that, then do it. So my final thoughts, uh, the NCLEX is definitely hard, but it is also very doable. I think for me, it was just a matter of being honest with myself and taking the time to understand what I didn't know along with what I do know. For any repeat test takers, I feel for you. I know what it's like. I understand what you're going through. As someone who made it to the other side, I believe in you. You can do it. Everybody says this and it's kind of corny, but it's true. You made it through nursing school. Mm -hmm. You can make it through this. Mm -hmm. You got this. I'm rooting for you. Okie dokie. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like these types of videos, hit that subscribe button. I'm always looking for different ways to help out you all. Hit that like button if you guys liked the video and found it helpful. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section and I'll answer them. I'll see you guys in the next episode. All right. Well, um, Shedman Soltez, like I said, go over and show him some love. I think he made a great video. Um, I, his, uh, change strategies definitely worked for him. I think they could work for some of you. Um, I think that some of them also worked with him cause he's probably a certain personality who, um, resonates with certain type of, uh, testing strategies and, uh, but he did all the right things conceptually. He increased his confidence. He, it sounds like he, um, self-evaluated his questions to see, like what patterns he ha had that were not good. He took notes on the things that he was listening to so that he could actually implement them. So those are all great things that he did. And we will continue to do reaction videos every week. If you have a video you'd like me to react to, please feel free to leave it in the comments section or email me at Sharon at clinicreviews.com. May God bless you and we will see you next time.